Hey Scruffy, how you doing? Hey, I don't know if I want you scratching my... Hey, why are you hissing at me? <clears throat> so I'm not sure why he was climbing up the screen. Don't really want him destroying it. So I just stuck my hand out to the screen. I wasn't even close to him. And he hissed at me. So I don't know. He scratched me last night. I wasn't going to hold it against you, but yeah, you're already kind of acting poorly. Okay, are you ready for food? Went all, to all the trouble of preparing your food, so I might as well give it to you. So you got your meaty pate with uh, real chicken, I think. And uh, your uh, Kirkland kibble. Okay. Sound good? Okay, well, I'll pick it up. Okay, I'm gonna bring it out. Water. Close the door. <clears throat> so I'm gonna change your water. So I'm get your old water out. Water in. You're already coming towards me here. You need to finish switching your water yet. Okay, well, I gotta get up and sit in the chair. Now she's sitting right next to my chair there. So. so usually you run away. Yeah, there, that, that's why I like it. <laughs> it's a game of glove on. It's all wet. So the glue didn't dry off from last night. So I missed, judged uh, how much uh, rain or hail that we got yesterday. <clears throat> so I think we got a lot more than I thought. At least in terms of actual volume of water. Because, yeah, the sheets on the table are still wet. So, I don't think Scruffy's going to jump on the table uh, or stay on there anyway anytime soon because it's still kind of soaked. So, he might have jumped up just to see if it, what it was like, but yeah, he'd probably stay there very long. So I haven't seen him on the table. Yeah, I think he feels that my glove's kind of wet, so it's probably not his favorite. So, not sure what to do about it. So you just have to deal with it, Scruffy. So another reason they say I misjudged the water volume from the rain or the hail was uh I went for a bike ride today, so the first, first time I've been out in a couple days. First time I've been bike riding in several more days than that. Um, so I was thinking I probably should do a run since it's uh, right off the reins. But uh, 
I'm, if I follow my routine, I'm supposed to do intervals tomorrow, and I, I know my legs and body have been kind of hurting and pushing myself a little too hard. So even though I just got two days off, more or less, figured you know maybe one one more day avoiding the high impact stuff might do me some good. <clears throat> so I said, okay, well, let's try going for a bike ride so I can uh, do a couple of different things. So one, I could you know, stick to my alternate routes where I don't go on mud. But then I was feeling kind of bored and I felt like I wanted to do something a little more challenging. So I ended up uh, deciding to take one of the harder routes, um, but it's on dirt. But I, it's one of the more exposed areas, so usually there's like a lot of sun. It's basically an exposed mountainside. And um, because it's exposed, I thought maybe the sun would basically keep it dry. Because I noticed in the previous rains, yeah, it, tends to dry up pretty quickly and uh, become solid. So I thought, okay, well, it's exposed mountainside. You know, we really only had one day of rain. Can't be too bad. And boy, was that a mistake. So I get up, or I start climbing up the thing, and I'm noticing, yeah, it's kind of muddy, but it's manageable. And then as I keep going, it gets worse and worse and worse. And it's also getting steeper and steeper because it's like one of those steep, really steep uh, hills that I don't usually go up. But was, as I said, I was kind of looking for something different. And so at a certain point, uh, there's a, um, I basically, I lose traction completely and I, um, have to start walking. So I thought, okay, well, I'm on a really steep section of the climb. So maybe uh, after I clear this section, I can get up back on the bike. So I walk for a little bit more, and the mud's actually getting worse. And then there's another bicycle, bike slits coming my way from the other direction, and he yells at me. Um, Basically, it's really muddy. It's worse. And then um, he says, turn back. <laughs> At first, I didn't quite understand. I thought he was asking me uh, how the conditions were from where I was coming. And I was basically trying to say, oh, it's about the same as here. <clears throat> but then I realized after he said, turn back, he was meaning uh, I should be turning back because he's warning me the mud's getting a lot worse. Uh, so... I kept going because it took me a little while to process what he had said. Because as as I said at first, I thought he was asking me, not telling me. And um, and I kind of wanted to see over the horizon to see if the mud would dry up. But as it got worse, it got really bad. So the mud started really caking onto my tires. And as I was pushing my bike forward, the mud was basically sticking to the tires and then it would get caught in the fork of the bike and the brakes. And so, so much mud accumulated that I couldn't spin the wheels anymore. So I couldn't push the bike any further. Um, yeah, it was like a hard, sticky mud, not like a wet, liquidy mud. And so the mud was just sticking to everything and I couldn't uh, move any further, and uh, I was stuck in my shoes, and just making a big mess everywhere. And so I realized at that point I needed to turn around because yeah, there's no way I'm gonna get get past uh, where I was. And so that hard piece of fur 
is really kind of an obstacle now. I feel like I need to do something about it. But yeah, he's not going to let me. Okay, well, you ready for some uh, food? So you didn't scratch me. So that's good. So I think yeah, we're probably ready for dinner here. Does that sound good, Scruffy? Ready for food? Okay, so let's get your food. I think he's going to back back for the glove. But now I'm going to give you your food, okay? I'm sure you're hungry. I'm going to pick up the brush. And I'm going to try to brush you. Okay. It's just the brush. You know the brush, we do this every night. So I turned back, hit down the mountainside, and, and then basically I ended up doing a alternate route that stays on a pavement, but it was kind of late. So I was covered in mud, bicycle was covered in mud, big giant mess. So shoe, shoes are extremely muddy. Even my water bottle, I, yeah, my gloves were just covered in mud. And so when I tried to get my water bottle out, I ended up putting mud on my water bottle, and including the little straw that I drink from. Oops. Okay, I'm going to switch brushes. Putting mud in my mouth, trying to drink. Having trouble gripping the brush. Okay, got it. It's just the brush. Let's see if I can brush your tail a little bit. Flip the brush over. Try to get the tail again a little bit. So I'll do your head. Okay, I think I'm done. <clears throat> so the club is really cold with, being, with it being wet. So anyway, I finished my bike ride and I get home and realize yeah, I pretty much need to clean my bike because it's completely covered in mud. And, um, if I let it dry up, it's just going to get worse. <clears throat> So I spent probably an hour trying to clean my bike. And then tried to clean off my shoes. Didn't do a very good job. And I probably need to do laundry later tonight. Because my clothes are also muddy. So that wasn't a very smart move on my part. In fact, that was a really stupid move on my part. <laughs> I should have known better. But yeah, in the past, you know, the rains we've been getting, for at least that section, doesn't, you know, tend to seem to do much. So I think, yeah, the, the storm that we got yesterday was actually pretty intense. I guess I should have realized that, considering this section of the deck got wet, I thought maybe that was more of a factor of uh, wind or something, but you know, I think it was just quantity.
So hopefully tomorrow I'll be strong enough to do my intervals. And do well. And then uh, another day I'll try to bike again. Make it should be nice and clean. And then, yeah, I re oiled the chain and cleaned the chain a bit. So hopefully it'll be a good ride. I mean, the best cleaning the chain. Should have been more patient and cleaned it more properly. I was kind of in a hurry. Just, it, it kind of a lousy job. So it, it's, it's probably okay. Start using WD 40 to try to strip it and dirt and grease. <clears throat> and use some paper towels to kind of wipe it. And ended up having to use a screwdriver to pry off some of the really dumped up. Uh, Fred that was in the, the derailleur and uh, some of the other parts. And you could see, yeah, some of the Fred was just kind of turning the sludge and kind of tripping off the, the gears. So, if I had done a better job, I probably, probably just took the hose and did a couple cycles of the WD-40 and just get everything off. But, I was lazy, I only did it one, one, one pass over, and then I said like, good enough, and we oiled it with proper like, best glue. So hopefully it'll be good enough. It's a 30 year old bicycle, so whatever. That's the nice, one nice thing about having an old, old bicycle. We worry too much about uh, keeping it pristine. It's a good bike though, I really like it. I have a bike mechanic uh, hired him twice this past uh, year because uh, the, the bike needed a pretty serious uh, maintenance. <clears throat> and uh, he was telling me, I think. Yeah, I forgot what it made. Yeah, he basically was commenting after he, was, he fixed my bike in return. He's like, yeah, this is actually a really nice bike. It was a mid-range bike in the... I think it was a 1990 model. So it's a mid range bike back then. So this is pretty good quality. So it wasn't a cheapy, wasn't like the, the high end, but it was uh, good enough. And yeah, it lasted. So I'm happy. So it's really heavy by modern standards. I don't know actually know how heavy. I'm tempted to get a scale on that. But, uh, it's heavy, but to its credit, yeah, the, the it's chromoly frame, it's the steel, it holds up. So, here are these uh, carbon frame ones, yeah, they have kind of a limited lifespan because they'll crack after a certain, a certain uh, amount of time. I have no idea, same with the aluminums. So I heard there's a proposed legislation to give a tax credit for e-bikes. Good for like up to, I think it's like fifteen hundred dollars or something like that. So I think if you buy like a, but yeah, caps out. So basically, you want to buy like a, no more, you know, seven thousand dollar bike or something. I forgot. But, uh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> 
bicycles are not in shortage. E-bikes are in massive shortage right now. So the last thing they need is a government subsidy. So our, our taxpayer money at work doing the stupidest things possible. But there he is. I mean, he keeps going back there. I don't know why. There's like no food there. And uh, I think if they pass it, I'm not sure if they passed or not. If they pass it, I don't think it actually kicks in until next year. And I'm sure that's just going to inflate the cost of the bikes by the same amount that you know, the tax credit's good for. Unless you buy early. So I'm thinking I might order early. So, uh, I was actually never going to buy an e-bike because it was just too expensive, but hey, they're going to give me a tax credit for it and maybe I'll get one. Thank you other taxpayers. And if uh, Puerto Rico works out, yeah, maybe. So I don't know if I'll be able to deduct it or not. So the advantage of Puerto Rico is you don't have to, uh, they don't have the IRS there. So, <laughs> so I'll, have to, I'll have to look into it. But, uh, but yeah, that's why I've been looking into Puerto Rico. So they have a really good deal for Americans uh, on the mainland. So basically, you get uh, with a favorable tax policy to try to entice people to come there. And then because uh, they're not a state, they're a territory, um, basically, yeah, you don't have to deal with the IRS, so you're roughly exempt from the IRS with some caveats. So that scratcher keeps moving further and further back. So I guess he's using it. Okay, folks, I guess that's it for tonight. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.